<clears throat> right, now where was I? London! So we went to the home of my great 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 grandfather Sir Isaac Pennington, also known as the Tower of London, where he was a lieutenant, and then later on a prisoner for regicide, where he lived out the rest of his life until he died. Turns out, they aren't very lenient when you execute the king. Yeah, who knew that? They also have these really awesome wire statues that are amazing, although questionably relevant to the environment in which they are placed, and these tour guides called beef eaters that have funny hats. I love a good funny hat. We also went to the city of Bath for a day, which, like Nashville, Indiana, shares my love of creepy mannequins outside shops. They also have quite a few of these little signs placed about, just meant to give you little tidbits of information about things. Oh, young horned Katie did. I wonder what? This is me adjusting grass in a vain attempt at an artsy shot. It didn't work. There's lots to do in Bath, like the Jane Austen Center or the Fashion Museum, however we only had one day in Bath so we chose to do the main attraction there, being the Roman Baths themselves. The Roman Baths are this massive complex built around these bubbling springs that the Romans thought possessed magical healing properties, but in actuality is just air from underneath the Earth's crust heated by magma and then sent up to the surface. I think it's really interesting how ancient peoples interpreted scientific phenomena because they literally have no understanding or basis on how any of that would happen, so they're forced to conclude that it's magic. And I think they're sort of right. We live in a world of scientifically understandable magic. And that's kind of cool. Also this. Then we went north to see the buffalo sign and got a bus out to Stonehenge. Pause the video. That is a sign that says tank crossing. After letting all of those tanks cross, we did finally get out to Stonehenge, but there were all of these rocks in the way, so I couldn't actually see it. Kind of a bummer. While at the train station going back to London, we found this sign indicating that their toilets weren't working, but they did have changing stations for parents who happened to have babies. Back in London, we went to Harrods Department Store, notable for being the most ridiculously oversized department store ever. They have a Christmas room, several rooms dedicated to food. This entire room is entirely used for the sale of chocolates. They sell quail eggs. Like, how obscure can you get? They do have this obsession with adorable teddy bears there as well. It's kind of weird, but they must be selling. London is definitely by far the most eclectic city I've ever been in. Parts of it look like this and this, while other parts look like this and this, and still other parts look like this and this, and even though you see them all separately and it seems like it would never go together, it does into one just shockingly beautiful city. I was really sad to go, but, you know. So the next day we did leave for Paris, and they must have known that I was coming and that I'm from Indiana, because upon arriving right outside the train station was the Indiana Club. I didn't even know we got a club. One thing about going to Paris is that there is a bit of a language barrier, however, I found that if you say pardon, merci, and bonjour over and over, eventually what you want to happen will happen. If you can only do one thing in Paris, make it the Louvre, I very easily could have spent all of my time there, and I kind of did. The Louvre is filled to the brim with just beautifully presented art everywhere. Just walking through it is incredible. They have Hammurabi's Code there, which is the first written legal system ever with the actual writing etched on the back. One thing I noticed, out of all of the art at the Louvre, a shockingly disproportionate amount of that contained ocelots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ocelots. Nine. And this ocelot right here was in the personal apartments of none other than Napoleon III. Longtime subscribers, this moment is for you. And me, mostly. I stood in NP3's apartments. Look, this is his hallway, and that's his chandelier, and this is his brightly lit room, and this is his weirdly narcissistic portrait of himself, and this is his comically large dinner table with 46 chairs, and that is Napoleon the First throne. Can you tell I have a thing for the Napoleons? I also saw the Mona Lisa, which was completely engulfed in people, including this guy who may have directional issues. It's... it's behind you, sir. There was a lot of art out there that I liked, but I noticed after a while that my taste in art is pretty specifically limited to old, sad men with beards. I honestly do not know. The Louvre also coincidentally wins the award for coolest elevator. Of course, I saw all the other touristy stuff in Paris as well, like the Arc de Triomphe and Notre Dame, and I climbed the first two tiers of the Eiffel Tower. Made it. Have we abandoned yet? The view was, for the record, definitely worth it. The next day we took the train out to Versailles, which was the palace of Louis XIV through XVI, and also the economic and political center of the world for a very long time. Nice digs, Louise. Versailles is massive. In fact, some parts of Versailles are so impressive it's hard to believe that it's real. There are also a huge number of gardens to explore with fountains and statues and mazes. We were going in this maze that we thought would be kind of cool to go through, um, but on the first try we got there. Victory. The throne room was, well, I, I think it just speaks for itself. And here's the man that built it all, Louis XIV, definitely the most powerful man of his era. I am the state, the sun king himself. And here are the bow ties on his shoes. What? Walking through the wealth and grandeur of a place like Versailles, it's easy to have a nostalgia for the unexperienced past, but you just have to remember, they didn't have Marie Antoinette on the DS. 
so it's all gonna be okay. And while it was cool to see the sights, I think far more Parisian was the time spent just sitting, looking out at the water or at the park, taking in the whole of Paris laid out before me. And then we had to leave for home, <laughs> I'll be honest, I didn't wanna leave, but I know someday I'll be back. Until then.